You might remember my previous Animal Watch episode, why wolves hate men and not women. He actually came up to me, he took the food. You can tell he definitely prefers the food over me. Well, yeah. that's the same with anything, but he's a lot better with you, you know, he's like yeah. coming up to you, so you, you can do, give him strokes. You do feel the sort of, that he might be slightly more wary of men than women. Yeah, probably. Yeah. It's one of our most talked about films and it sparked thousands of comments asking, would wolves treat everyone the same? And when I say everyone, I'm talking about the people who don't fit neatly into male or female boxes. Those with different hormone levels, different voices, or different energy altogether. Today, we're exploring that very question. How do wolves perceive people across the gender and hormonal spectrum? And what does science actually say about it? Wild and socialized wolves are cautious around adult human men for several biological reasons. Size and posture, taller, broader frames signal dominance. Voice, deeper tones can sound like growls or threats. Hormones and scent, higher testosterone produces stronger musky compounds such as androstenone and androstenol. Movement, assertive gestures often trigger defensive reactions. By contrast, wolves tend to relax around smaller bodied humans with higher voices and softer movement, traits they associate with reduced threat. Women fall into this category most of the time. How wolves read humans, hormones and scent. Wolves experience the world primarily through smell. Their olfactory sense is over a hundred times stronger than ours. They don't see gender in the way we do. They smell chemistry. Testosterone and estrogen change the odour molecules we emit through skin and sweat. So when someone's hormone profile changes because of stress, health or medical treatment, wolves pick it up immediately. What science suggests about different human profiles? Let's look scientifically at how wolves might respond to various human hormone profiles and cues. Cisgender men, which are biological men at birth. Typical higher testosterone, stronger scent, deeper voice, larger frame. Wolves often respond with initial caution or distance until they learn there's no threat. Cisgender women, which are biological women at birth. Lower testosterone and higher estrogen. Softer scent, higher pitch, smaller stature, usually approached more calmly. Now we get on to the controversial stuff but I'm basing this all in cold, hard science, not opinion. So please remember this. Transgender women, after at least a year of estrogen therapy and surgery. Studies show testosterone drops dramatically and body odor shifts towards the female range. I can only conclude that wolves might perceive them similarly to cisgender women, less aggressive scent, gentler tone. However, if they are of a large, tall build and still exhibit manly mannerisms, this may not be the case. Remember, wolves rely on several cues, not just one. Transgender men, again, after a year of testosterone therapy, so as to make sure the hormones have truly kicked in. Increased androgen levels deepen voice, alter scent and boost muscle tone. Those cues could make wolves treat them more like cisgender men, initially wary, then accepting once relaxed energy is shown. If the transgender man is short or acts softly like a woman still, the wolf will be more relaxed than if the person is tall or aggressive in mannerisms. There are still other categories I'd like to address. 
cross-dressers or gender non-conforming men without hormonal change. The external appearance will have changed from clothing, but underlying scent chemistry remains masculine. The wolf should still read the scent as male, though body language and tone could soften their reaction. Sexual orientation doesn't alter hormones, but behavioural expression does. Gentler mannerisms or tone can reduce perceived dominance. So responses may vary widely depending on energy, not identity. Hormones may set the first impression, but energy seals the bond. Wolves respond to calm confidence, not fear, not bravado. Anyone, regardless of gender identity, who moves softly, breathes slowly and shows respect could win their trust. I have, however, seen wolves, though, pick up on the scent of a strongly scented male before they even saw him. So body odour and hormones do undoubtedly play a massive part in this. The science frontier and responsible curiosity. The truth is, we still don't know how wolves interpret the huge variety of human scents and signals in today's world. It's an area waiting for real research. Here at Animal Watch, we'd love to explore that question further in a future episode, partnering with scientists and licensed wolf facilities to study how wolves react to people with different hormone profiles and energies. If you're of a gender that is not cisgender and live in the UK or USA and are interested in collaborating with a meet and greet with wolves, please get in touch through our official Animal Watch contact page. Together we can explore the mystery and find out once and for all what the results might show. What wolves teach us is that instinct does not care about gender or identity. Only how we move, smell and behave. A wolf can never be fooled into anything other than what biology has created them to understand, which is to honestly and accurately read nature in the way it genuinely is. And if you enjoyed this episode, then please give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel by clicking the button in the bottom hand corner. And be sure to tune in every week where we'll be bringing you more amazing episodes on dogs, wolves, animal rescue and conservation. Bye for now.